Good morning, everybody. Action by Thought. I'm Chris. Uh, Lord, we just we pray for our nation. We pray for the day. We pray for Israel and Jerusalem and their peace as you have instructed us in the Bible. Uh, we pray that this ministry, this particular message, would resonate with people and through the Holy Spirit they'll get something from it because there's, it's not me they need to be listening to, it's you. I just pray your hand in this video. In Christ's name, amen. The title on this one is Consider This. Um, and just to cut to the chase, the chaos around the world is growing. No, I don't think anybody's got any doubt about that. If they are, they're, they're blind or just in, in a not listening or not paying attention, ignorance or... And I don't mean they're ignorant people, but, the, you know, the ignorance is bliss, uh, old saying. And a lot of people just don't want to hear it. They're tired of hearing the stuff, and they don't want to, they don't want to know. And we need a balance in that. We don't have to be uh, mesmerized by it and not doing anything else. That's not biblical either. But we can't hide our head in the sand and not know what's happening around us. That's dangerous in multiple ways including biblically but just maybe if you'll study for Christians and those who are not Christians that are seeing things looking and hearing all these people talk about prophetic times and the end of times excuse me uh, get in your Bible study talk to some get some Christian counsel your preacher a, a Sunday school teacher whatever and or if you don't go to church Go pray on it and go talk to one in God leading you to, very possibly, in God leading you to your salvation through the Holy Spirit, faith in Him, by God's grace, faith in Christ. Very possibly, you could see that you do need a Savior if you're not saved already. If you are saved and you're still basically with your head in the sand, uh because you just don't want to hear it, don't want to know, tired of listening to it, and it's everything's turned so political. I get it. I do. I understand. But it still does not mean that we don't need to know what's going on. The prophetic books even say, some of them, it, uh, to when you see that day approaching, that day being end of time days, when you see that day approaching, uh, first off, look to the sky. Be... Uh, in a not a literal sense of looking up and waiting for the sky to split but be ready for the rapture have your heart ready Christians closer growing closer to God non-Christians coming to God um, and being in it says do not forsake gathering as some do that meaning uh, small groups uh, Bible studies small groups church and uh, even David Jeremiah, I'm listening to him right now on TV, but, well, I've got it paused, but that's not what he's talking about right now on that video. But he has said before that even if, I believe it was David Jeremiah, uh, even if the government comes in like they have in other places, if the United States government decides to say, hey, you can't meet because we've had an overthrow of our current government or something like that, whatever, uh, they're going to have a hard time uh, regulating people's living rooms, small groups. I'm not, I'm not even suggesting that things are going to go there. I'm saying the what ifs, and we need to consider the what ifs. If you already established, that's an easier thing to do, and that can grow. Uh, but regardless, we've got to stay in the Bible, and we have to stay with our groups, because as times get worse, and it's already worse than it was 10 years ago. Uh, I'm in the southeast. I'm in Alabama. We don't really have a whole lot of... Uh, Christian persecution and, and things like that. I've had some people, I've got a ministry card that I pass out a lot. Uh, and I've I've had one person turn it down completely. And I don't know what his motive was. All I know is he turned it down. It might not have been a 
Christ rejecting kind of thing. He just was not interested in my blog and YouTube. Possibly, maybe it was rejecting. I don't know. I've had several people take the card and okay, whatever. And you could tell right away they were that card was not even going to be found in five minutes. And then a lot of people eager, and I've had a lot of conversations about it. My whole point is, there's not a lot of persecution here. And that's a good thing. Praise God. I mean, quite literally, I don't mean that flippant. But what if we do come to the point where, even if it's not government, but there are surroundings... Uh, I mean, look at how many people, and this is just insanity... Even for those that don't pull for Israel, don't, don't support Israel, and don't understand why we need to, that is absolutely a must to support Israel. But even for those that don't, for folks to be protesting a war, and that's nothing unusual, and our, our, the U.S. helped militarily in that war, I'm talking about Israel, uh, to be supporting Hamas, which is a terrorist organization, Hamas wants nothing, look them up, Hamas, absolutely, if you don't want the link to your uh, computer on a search like that, go to the library, uh, get, look on their computer, uh, but look at their charter, they want the Jews, they want Israel annihilated, which means completely gone, no remnant. It's not going to happen because Bible, the Bible says God will protect his people, the Israelites, the Jews. And the chant from the river to the sea, I don't remember the guy's name. I just heard it on the radio the other day from 1400s, 1500s, I don't remember. Uh, it might have even been before that. It was before that. But, first off, the word Palestine, the name Palestine for the Palestine area there in Israel, that was named that as an insult to the Jews. Look it up. I'm not telling you anything you can't find even on an internet search. The chant from the river to the sea was basically, as I recall, coined by this man that I can't remember his name, for the annihilation of the Jews from the Mediterranean River to the, uh, from the Mediterranean Sea to the Jordan River, from the river to the sea. That's not a supportive chant, people. That is calling for the annihilation of the Jews and the takeover of Israel. But now come back to this, consider this title. I did kind of hit a pretty big tangent there, even though it's, it, it ties in. It's, it's a part of it. I just didn't type it up. But just maybe when you study these prophetic books, all this madness is really things coming together. It's the prophecies coming together. If you will read and study those, and do, do a little deeper than just reading. you Just reading, you might be a little confused on things. You've got to, uh, you got to want to know it, to learn it, and to dig in, and to uh, pick up particular words that for the English language mean this, but for the Hebrew or the uh, Greek translation into English, uh, honestly, the English language is a little uh, difficult to get a full understanding with the translation to. I've talked about this before. But Deuteronomy 4.30, when you are in distress and all these things come up on you in the latter days, Everything I've just been talking about. When you turn to the Lord your God and obey His voice. And I probably should have put thir uh, verse 31 of Deuteronomy 4.30. I probably should have put the, the rest of the passage in there because it's talking about God giving us peace within the chaos and the fact that the chaos has to happen in order for the last days to happen and coming into the tribulation period, which ultimately ultimately the battle of armageddon and then the there's more to it i'm i'm nutshelling it and then the thousand year reign on earth of course that is all after the rapture 
Mark 13, 29. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that it is near at the doors. When these things, all that chaos, all these, uh, I mean, there's, there's scripture that lists things. And there's also events happening. The Iran directly sending missiles to Israel and then Israel retaliation, if I understood the headline that I read yesterday. Uh, all of that's prophetic. I'm not exactly sure how it fits in because I'm not that well studied on it. Shame on me. But it is prophetic to the end of times. Luke 21, 31 and 32. You, so you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say unto you, or I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. That doesn't mean that nobody will die in that generation. But that does mean that the time clock for now I am not putting a time on the rapture or the second coming or any of that there is no precursor to the rapture biblically there is there are those precursors to the second coming that's what we're talking about here but it does say that that generation will know in contrast to that generation will it you won't go till all of that generate time on earth will not go until that generation as we see these things happening all die out and it's the following generation very similar to but in contrast the Israelites the Jews in their trek to the promised land because of their disobedience the first disobedience to God the first generation not none with the exception of Joshua and I don't remember the other name <laughs> but it's it, it's in there none of that generation was able to go in, cross into the promised land so they literally had to wait till the, the last one of that first generation died before God allowed them in there because of their disobedience early on and it's just uh, the Jews disobedience to God during that trek is just over and over and over just like us now just shows differently because it's a different time Matthew 24 38 through 40 for as in the days before the flood Noah and the ark, they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark took I think somewhere about a hundred years to build it with him being could you imagine how much scoffing and laughing at him was with drought for decades and multiple decades and he's building a big old boat the ark but until Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away so also will be the coming of the Son of Man capital S capital M Jesus and then two men in the field and one will be taken the other left and then of course the passage goes on they did not know till the flood came what that means is it wasn't hidden from them just like in Noah's day it's not in today it's not hidden from anybody today but there's a lot of people rejecting it a lot of people that just don't believe that the rapture and then the second coming excuse me can happen in our lifetime we have uh, humanity Christians have been so inundated and doubtful and that that we're going to see that somebody is because it's a biblical fact wake up people wake up I just woke up recently to be perfectly honest I thought I was I was I was basically a church going Christian not a working toward obedience Christian and working on my relationship my personal relationship with Jesus and then therefore my the next would be my marriage my evangelism my marriage me and my wife and growing us closer to Jesus and closer together and then that for our kids and family it's just been recent that I've gotten that serious I'll answer for that part that's on me 
Where are you? Where do you sit with it? What are you going to answer for? How much are you ignoring? I'm being blunt with you because I had to get blunt with me, or not because, but I also had to get blunt with me and get and to get aimed to God. He's had to work on me and still working on me. Nobody's arrived until nobody's arrived this side of heaven. No Christian has arrived this side of heaven. But we are to evangelize and bring more people to Christ and then nurture that with them, not th uh, through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit through us, and help them grow toward Christ. That is our job. That is our purpose on this earth. Hebrews 10, 24 and 20. Oh, before I go to that, the comment I just, the thing I just said, that is our purpose on earth. That is exactly our purpose on earth. Now, we do have to work. We've got to... Uh, We've got to live. We've got to do those things that get us through day-to-day -day life. But are you... I was a railroader. I've got a bad back. I'm on disability. But was I a railroader that happened to be a Christian? Or was I a Christian that happened to be a railroader? Unfortunately, for most of my 20 years railroading, I was a railroader that happened to be a Christian instead of the other way around. Where do you sit? Where, where are you I am challenging, but I'm challenging in this capacity. Be honest with yourself. Pray. Be honest with God, Christians. And where are you? If you're where you're supposed to be right now, praise the Lord. And don't back off. Don't give up. Keep the faith. Keep the battle. The struggle is not over. The battle is not over. If you're the Christian that is not then get real with yourself. Get real with God in prayer. Go to Him. He will honor that sincere prayer. I'm not where I need to be, God, but I want to be. Show me. Uh, been there, done that, will do more because I am human. Non-believers or non-Christian, just because the believers, the word believers in the Bible is talking about those who accept God's grace through faith in Christ and ask him in their heart. The devil believes and knows that God is there. But he's not. God is not Lord of his, obviously, because he's the adversary. I'm just saying the devil knows. The devil believes. The devil has no faith there. Hebrews 10, 24, 25. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as in, some, as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another, supporting, and so much more as you see the day approaching. We are told in Hebrews that we are going to need to support each other, that Christian counsel, that Christian support, because it's going to get rough. It's already started. How long does that go? I don't know, and nobody else does. If you find anybody that tries to act like they know that answer, they know that they know when the rapture is coming. They know when the second coming is coming is going to happen. Do not listen. Walk away. Pray for them. Do not try to argue them down. That is not biblical either. You can use the scripture then tell that says no one knows. But if they don't listen to that, walk away and pray for them. And then if God wants your paths to cross again, hopefully that means that they've listened to the beckoning of the Holy Spirit and will listen to not what you have to say, not what I have to say, but what the Bible has to say. That's what we present. Think about, uh, and I did a, a blog earlier this morning. Eve tried to talk to the serpent, tried to have a dialogue there, and she lost because she fell to the temptation. Adam did not. He did his wife's bidding. He did Eve's bidding because he listened to Eve, and he also ate of the fruit. Instead of saying, no, woman, we need to go, and the word woman in that time was a compliment, not a, hey, what, what, what are you talking about, woman? No, that's not what that means. Do your due diligence. 
if you try to prove me wrong on that and you're honest about it, you're going to find out that I'm right because I already have I have done my due diligence. I could dig, dig deeper. We always could dig deeper. But that term at that time was an endearing term, regardless of what you think about it today. I thought the same thing when I first read the scripture, so I did a little digging. Now, the contrast. Adam, uh, Eve dialogued. Adam did not stand up, be the Christian head of the household, and tell Eve, no, we can't do that. God said no. And then at another time, Eve could have done the same thing for Adam. It's a, The marriage is a mutual thing with the man at the head of the household. But and the contrast is Jesus showed us how to fight the devil's wiles. God, James 4, 7, and 8, in a nutshell, says when Christians are fully submitted to God and resisting the devil, we can't just, well, we can't be fully submitted if we're allowing, if we're falling into temptation and not battling it, not, not recognizing the out God gave us and get out of there. So, but we submit to God, we resist the devil, and the devil will run, will flee from us. Flee means running from danger, not just running away. But he flees from us because he sees God in us. God gives us the out. He will not let us be tempted more than we can handle. And within that, he gives us the, like if you're a drug addict, for example, or a past drug addict, and you know the areas of town obviously you would know the areas of town to get the drugs and you know that if you went there you would buy some so you don't go that's one out that's one way out it's kind of like that if your eye offends you pluck it out that scripture does not mean literally pluck your eye out that means stay away from visual temptations as best as you can and I will put one more example in that if it's for example a porn problem or a sexual problem. It doesn't have to be porn for a sexual problem. And there's a billboard that you know that's in the most direct route for you to get from a to point A to point B. And it is a temptation for you. It puts you in a mindset because it is a immoral billboard, not to world standards, but to godly Christian standards. Yes, it's an immoral billboard. It shows things that should not be shown. Drive another route I don't care if it takes 20 more minutes plan your day, plan your route do not pass that billboard pluck your eye out do not put yourself where you have to see that billboard because the ones I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the big billboards that are really hard to not see but the, the point is that you have a weakness there whoever is that has that weakness there and We've got to put boots on the ground as well. God will do his part when we do ours. He's waiting on us, and that is where prayer comes in. Don't default on prayer. Don't look at it as, well, there's nothing else to do, and there could be that there's nothing else to do. You've got your boots on the ground. You've done everything you can do. You should have been praying the whole time anyway. You should have prayed before you did anything. I don't care what the situation is. Pray, and it may be, as you're actively involved, maybe it's an emergency situation, you're running, it was just a car wreck or something, and you're running toward the car wreck to see if you can help, if there's something you can do to help. Lord, be with them and give me, under, you know, what do I do? What do I say? That is a prayer, and it is an appropriate prayer in that scenario. Don't look lightly at the power of prayer. Invoke God's names. Jehovah Rapha, our healer, Jehovah Jireh, God is sufficient. And there's a whole host of other names. He gave us those to use those, invoke those in prayer and give us one method of giving us access to the power of God's name. Just in his name, much less in him, in him and his ways. Consider this I've done a lot more talking than what I did typing on that blog because that uh, my my concentration on the blog was the chaos in the world, world not U.S. not restricted to the U.S. the world. 
Prayer is powerful. Do not use it lightly. Do not take it lightly. And do not restrict yourself to the prayer only if there is something that you can do. Pray about it. God, what can I do? Point me in a direction. Open doors. Talk through me. It can't be my words. It needs to be your words. Timing, His will, His way, all of it. That is the prayer unceasing. Not literally doing nothing but prayer because we have to deal with things. We have to be in we have to be in the world, Christians, not of the world. Anyway, guys, I love you to death in Christ. But the best part is that really doesn't do you a whole lot other than me trying to, to uh, putting these messages out and being obedient to Christ and His call on me. What is your call, Christians? Those that are not Christians, you're not going to know your call till you come to Christ to begin with. The only way to find out that and find out who you are is to come to Christ and then to pursue Christ. And that is the Great Commission, what us Christians are supposed to help non-Christians do and point them toward. And on that note, if you are interested in receiving Christ, follow me in this prayer. Excuse me. Follow me in this prayer. Lord, I come to you now. Uh, I know that I'm a lost sinner, Lord. I know you died on the cross and was raised again the third day for to forgive my sins and all the sins of all humanity. You were the perfect sacrifice once and for all. Lord, I love you. I want you please come into my heart. Save my soul. I want to live my life for you. Thank you, Lord, for loving me so I can know love and so I can love you. In Christ's name I pray. Amen and amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, you are a Christian. You are a child of God. You have been saved. All those mean the exact same thing. Now you need to find you a God-fearing, holy Bible-preaching church if you're not already in one. Pray about it. God will lead you. If you are in a church and God wants you somewhere else, I've been, I have experienced that and actually experienced it for a very long time Part of this was it within my disobedience to not answering the call that God had on me. But regardless, listen, to, pray on it. Listen to God. He'll send you to the. He'll get you to the church that that He wants you in. God fearing, holy Bible preaching. Talk to the preacher, pastor. He'll be glad to assist you. He'll be honored to assist you. Pray with you. Talk with you, and assist you as you are growing in Christ. This is not to forsake your Bible study, your Holy Bible study, your quiet time, your prayer time. And all everything, it's all included. But for whatever nervous you may be, and if you can't, if you have no place to go with your current situation, lifestyle, not life, but your current living situation, whatever, if that is a difficult thing for you to do, for whatever reason, let your fingers do the talking. The, my blog, actionbythought.blog, the, the heading on it is consider this for this YouTube video with that blog. My email address and my phone number is at the lower part of the blog. My email address and phone number will be in the description of this video. Reach out. I will be honored to discuss things with you and do what I can on this end. Pray with you, all of it. Uh, again, I love you in Christ, every one of you. But God loves you, and that's the main part. But you have to exercise your faith. Ask Jesus in your heart. Until the next one, amigos and amigas.